This video will present a brief introduction to Alteryx Designer, the canvas, and uh, what you're looking at here on your screen, and how tools work, and what's the workflow, and things of that nature. So Alteryx Designer is a tool-based data analytics software. You use it to, uh, you bring in data into Alteryx Designer, and then you can analyze the data with, with this software program. So when you open Alteryx Designer uh, on your computer, see I have it down here on my taskbar. When I open it, it opens to this screen by default. And I want to teach you guys what's going on here. So what you're looking at the screen is the Alteryx canvas. And you can think of it as being divided into four parts. So the tool configuration, I'm sorry, the uh, tool palette is up here at the top, everything up here, the tool palette. Then we have the workflow right here. And we're going to drag and drop tools. These are the tools. We're going to drag and drop those onto the workflow. And then once we've done that, whatever tool that we're on on the workflow, um, we get a configuration. The tool configuration will show up right here. For that tool, so the things that we, the various things we can do inside that tool, we can change those things uh, over here in the tool configuration. For example, if we drag and drop an input data tool right here, you see the this over here changed. This is the tool configuration for the input data tool. When we click off the tool over here onto the white space, then the tool configuration goes away. So the the tool configuration will only show what what tool you're clicked on in, in the workflow. And then once we hit run here, we run the workflow, then the results of that running of running that workflow will appear down here. So there's four four pieces to the Alteryx canvas. So the screen you're looking at is we call it the Alteryx canvas. It's comprised of four pieces. There's the tool palette up here, which I'm going to talk more about in a second. There's the workflow. So we drag and drop tools onto the workflow. And we can connect tools together, right? We can put a browse tool right here, connect it to the input data tool. And whatever tool you're, you've selected in the workflow, the tool configuration for that tool will show up over here. So that's the third piece of this canvas. Tool palette, workflow, tool configuration. And then finally, when we run the workflow, the results of running the workflow will show up down here. And we'll go through you know, more about the results here in a minute. So that's a brief overview. Let's talk more about the tool palette. So let me get rid of both of these tools here. I just uh, selected both of them, holding down CTRL, click on both of them, and then just hit delete, and it deletes the tools from the workflow. So the tool palette. So the tool palette here. As you can see, uh, like I said at the beginning, Alteryx is a tool-based data analytics software program. And so the tools that the, that the developers of Alteryx have created, they've decided to, put, decided to put those tools into various categories. And here are the categories. There's the in-out category. These are the tools in that category. Preparation category, the join category, and so forth. And each category has a different color, and the tools in that category have their own um, color. So let's go back to our favorites. So by default in Alteryx, when you open it up, you're, you're on the favorites category. And I believe Alteryx, by default, only puts a certain number of tools as favorites. I've added a bunch of tools to my favorites category since, since I've... Um, been using Alteryx, but I, I can't remember exactly what the default tools are that are in the favorites category. But, it, but they are tools that the developers feel that are most commonly used. So I'm pretty sure browse is a favorite by default, input data is a favorite, output data is a favorite. But not all of these are favorites by default. So to make a tool, to put a tool from its one of these categories into the favorites category, which is something you should do so that you don't have to keep going you should put the tools that you use all the time in your favorites category, then you can just find them all right here in one category. Uh, to put a tool into the favorites category, you just simply 
go to that category. Let, let's say we want to put, see this join tool here that's in my uh, favorites category? It's in the join category. So you would go to the join tool here and you see this, um, this uh, star, this yellow star. I've made it yellow by cl left clicking on it, but if I want to unfavorite it, then I left click on it and see it's it's not favorited. Now when I go to my favorites category, join isn't there anymore. So to go back to make it a favorite, you go back to join here. You just basically you just click the star. If you want this one to be a favorite, you click the star and it puts it in the favorites category. Now you see join is there. So that's how you add a tool to your favorites category. Now you might wonder, um, what do each of these tools do? I mean that's the whole purpose of teaching you Alteryx. I can't teach you what every single tool in Alteryx does in one sitting. There's over 120 tools, but um, each tool is pretty powerful. Um, to note, the best, your best source for quickly, um, if you're wanting some documentation on what a given tool does, um, is to go to, uh, go on Google and just type in Alteryx tool list with description. And the first result that comes up click on that and here it's taken all the categories in out preparation and so forth and any tool that's in that category it, it describes it if you click on it so the browse tool if you want to click on the browse tool here and it'll it'll open up and give you a whole blurb about what the browse tool does with some examples and everything so you go back here if you want to know what the input data tool does you go to input data and you would read all this. I'm going to summarize what the browse and the input data tools do today so you don't have to do that yourself. But this is the source for all the, this is your documentation. The Alteryx website, their documentation portal, this is your source of um, a lot of knowledge in Alteryx. If you, if you need a reference, come here to this website. Another way to figure out what a tool does is just take like the input data tool. Just let's drag and drop it and put it on the workflow. Um, and once it's there, you can click this help. Notice the tool configuration changed because now we've hovered over the input data tool. And here's the tool configuration for the input data tool. You can click the help, and if you click that, it takes you. It basically takes you to the website I just showed you how to get to. It takes you, basically it took us to this website and it took us to this link right here, right? It opened that up, see? Same thing, right? So that's that's another way to get to it. If you can't remember the website, just click the help. Um, I think there's other way, another way to do it as well. You can right click on the tool um, and no, that's not it. Let, let me let me delete this here. Let's see. Is there another way? I think you can just come up here and click on the tool, left click on it once, and then open an example. Yeah, just left click on it, and then um, you can open an example. And it opens an example right here in the workflow. And this gives you some really good information here about what the tool does. So I'm going to left click. I'm going to close that. Oh, and by the way, you can open multiple workflows here. You can only run one workflow at a time. You can run the one that's open, but you can open multiple ones. Like I can create another workflow here and put tools on this. But if I run, hit run, it only runs this workflow two, not workflow one. All right, let's X that. All right, the input data tool, what does this tool do? So this, in this video, I'm going to teach you the input data tool, and I'm going to teach you the browse tool, and I'm going to teach you the um, comment tool, which is in the documentation category. Input and browse are both in the uh, in and out category. So first, input data. Let's drag and drop an input data tool onto the workflow. And you see the tool configuration for the input data tool comes up over here. And so this is how you use this tool to get data into Alteryx. The whole point of using Alteryx is to analyze data, but you have to put the data into Alteryx before you can analyze it with the other tools. 
So there's a tool to fit the data into Alteryx. That's the input data tool. And so here, it's what it's asking for right here is, you know, where, where on my computer is the data? So you have to have the data saved to your computer. I have it saved on my desktop. It's the file that I'm going to use. So let me click this down arrow here. Go to Files. Go to Select File. Now you can input files. Let me let me back up here. Let me, let me back up. Let me redo what I just did. Go to files. These are the supported file types that you can open in Alteryx. So Alteryx um, is pretty flexible in the sense that you can bring in Excel files, uh, .csv files. That's what we're going to be dealing with um, today. And for the majority of me teaching, I use like, a .csv files. But Alteryx will open you know SAS files right here. Uh, they'll open all sorts of uh, Tableau files and so forth. So we go to select a file um, and then find the data. Go to my desktop. I've put it on my desktop. It's called the employee data. I'll open this. All right, notice how it, this changed down here. A preview of the first 100 rows of the employee data shows up right here. So in Alteryx, the word records also means rows. First 100 records, first 100 rows. All columns. Uh, rows in Alteryx are referred to as records, and columns in Alteryx are referred to as fields. So you need to learn the lingo to be able to understand uh, Alteryx. So I can, you see this record limit right here? If I only want the first 10 rows of the employee data.csv file, I can just put 10 here and it'll only, it'll only um, when I run the workflow here, it will only bring in the first 10 rows. But usually you don't use that. You usually bring in all the data. But that's what the record limit means. Uh, whoops, I clicked off the, off the tool. So yeah, that's all you do. You just bring in the data. You don't really have to change anything over here. This is a preview of the first 100 records in this .csv file. I mean, if we can, if I go and open the .csv file, you will see here, 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 here they are. Open up birth date here, you know. So in that preview, we get the first 100 records. How many records are in this data set? There's 474. Um, rows, 475 including the uh, column names or the field names, but 474 data records and the first 100 of them are, uh, would be shown right down here. That's what this preview is. Now, now we're going to want to run the workflow and that brings the data into Alteryx, but you cannot run the workflow if the data set is open on your computer and you remember I just opened it it's open right here see so if I hit run right here down in the results so here's what the results does first of all you see the red exclamation point and if I hover over that you can see the error on your screen it says error opening the file blah 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 the process cannot access the file because it's because it is being used by another process so this file here this data is being used by my computer, so Alteryx can't open it. So we need to close this file, I'll save, and then rerun our workflow, and then this, this uh, error will go away. Uh, so when you run, Alteryx is really good in terms of, it's pretty good in terms of um, letting you know first that there is an error, and then more importantly though, what is the error? You know, a lot of software programs will tell you there's an error, but in the little message they give you, you have no idea what the message means. You don't know what kind of error it is. Uh, but Alteryx is really good at letting you know exactly what the error is. That, that's something that Alteryx is really good at. So down in the results, <clears throat> it'll also will output the results. Um, it'll output the data as a result, but we couldn't get the data because there was this error. So Alteryx in the results, it outputs two things. It outputs the, the, the data, and it also out, outputs the messages. The messages are just messages to the users letting us know uh, 
if Altrix was able to run this workflow successfully. And if it wasn't, what were the errors and why were the errors? And it tells them. See, see, running this workflow up here, there was one error. There were no warnings. Um, and notice there's no results down here. So there should be two things here, messages and results. But there's no results. There's no data yet because no output. I should call it the output. There's no output from running this workflow because uh, we couldn't do anything with the data because right, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bring it in. But now that I've closed the data set, if I run this again, now there's no uh, exclamation point here. And then down here, we have a message. It just says 474 rows were read from that data set. That means the rows were inputted into Alteryx, so now we can use Alteryx to analyze the data. Um, I'm trying to think of I should be able to see the should be able to see the output. Where's the output? Ah, go back and click on the tool and, and then down in the results uh, tab, you can see now there's output here. There's the messages. That's the message. And here's the output. So if I left click this, here is the, the output from running this workflow. In other words, here's that data set. Notice all 474 records are displayed. But in general, um, the results you see in the output right here are not all of the records. It's just a percentage of them. If, they're not, if, there are not very, very, if there's not very much data up here, um, then it'll output everything. But there's there's a limit, and I don't know exactly what it is. There's a there's a space limit. There's a megabytes limit or kilobytes limit of what Altrix can output down here. So say you had a data set that had 24 columns and 300 million rows. Um, it, all of that would not show down here when we ran the when we ran the workflow. It would just show the first certain number of megabytes of data, which may translate into you know the first 10,000 rows because there's 24 columns, there's a lot of data there. So it'll only output the, the first per certain percentage of rows. There's a certain megabytes limit of space that it'll output down here in the results. And so to, to kind of counteract that, if you want to see all of the data output always, you use a browse tool. So let's drag and drop a browse tool onto the workflow, but we're not going to just put it anywhere. We're going to attach it to the input data tool. The browse tool is used to view data sets when you want to see the whole data, not just partial, partial results. So we drag and drop browse, attach it to the employee, to the uh, input data tool. What if we dragged and dropped it and we didn't want it to connect? What if we're like, oh, I don't want it to connect. But if you try to like disconnect it now, it just goes like this. You can't get it disconnected. So the way you do it is you hover over this little connection, and you right-click it, and you delete connection. And now we can put it. Um, but you notice how as soon as you get it close enough to in the input data tool, it automatically wants to form a connection. That's the cool thing about Altrix. It's such a, it's a drag and drop tools sort of software. It's really cool. There's not as much programming required as there are in other data analytics software programs like Python. It's mainly all programming, right? C++. Um, so, yeah, so drag and drop that here. And now we have to rerun the workflow because now we have two tools. Now, notice on the Browse tool, there's no tool configuration for the Browse tool. Um, you don't configure it. All Browse does is allow you to see the data. That's the... That's the um, that is the, the function of the browse tool. That's what, it, that's what it's used for. So I will run. Again, the results from running this workflow are shown down here, but um, the results from, you see how it says results dash browse? If we click on the browse tool, these are the results from running this workflow from the browse tool. So this will always be all of the data. And notice now it gives a space as well. If we, it's just, it doesn't just say 474 records displayed. 
it has a comma and then 16 kilobytes. So that's how much data there is in this data set. This is all the data. If we click on the employee, if we click on the input data tool, this is the results from running just that part of it. And notice it just says 474 records display and there's no comma and then 16 kilobytes. Uh, this also happens to be all of the data, but it's just because this data set is so small, like I said before. But if we had a data set that had 300 million uh, rows and 16 columns, when we ran this workflow, if we looked at the results from this, from the input data tool, it would just be the first, you know, 10,000 rows. But if we looked at the, if we looked at the results from the running this workflow from the browse tool, it would be all 300 million rows. It would be everything. And then there would be a, a number here for the kilobytes or megabytes or gigabytes of space that the data takes up on the computer within Altrix. All right. Once you click on the Browse tool, notice that the configuration over here for the Browse tool, this is basically it's giving you information about the variables. And so that's what's um, shown here. There's 474 records in our data set, rows. There are 10 fields, so 10 variables, 10 columns. And the data takes up 16 kilobytes of space within Altrix on the computer. And Altrix compresses the data. If you look at the size of the, the .csv file that we've put in here, it's bigger than 16 kilobytes, but Altrix compresses it and reports the compressed size here. These are the variables that are in our data set. There's a column titled ID, a column for gender, a column for birth date. It's an employee data set. It's a set of employees. Uh, we have their ID number, we have their gender, male or female, we have their birth date. We have their education level. Uh, we have their job category. And I'll talk more about these later, like what does one, two, and three mean? We have their salary. We have their beginning salary. We have the time that they've been on it on their job. We have their previous experience. And we have a variable that indicates whether they're a minority or not. Zero, they're not a minority. One, they are a minority. So we can see that 369 of the, of the 474 individuals were a minority and 104 of them were not. I'm sorry, 369 were not and 104 of them were. So the browse tool enables you to see these things. If we click on the ID variable, we can see its type. By default, Alteryx gives every variable when you input data into Alteryx, by default Alteryx gives every variable a data type of the underscore string which stands for variable string. We can see the ID variable, if we look down here, is should be a numeric variable. There's only numbers here. There aren't letters. And there aren't any special characters, like ex exclamation points or anything like that. No dollar signs like there is with the salary variable. <clears throat> but Alteryx, by default, gives every variable, uh, if we click gender, you can click the variables down here as well, and they change over here. You can click birth date. Notice the variable type is always the underscore string. So the, the variable type, the data type of the variable, data types are really important in Alteryx because there are certain, um, there's lot, there, there are certain, there are functions in Alteryx first, and we're going to learn about functions later, but not today, but later in the course. Um, there are functions that take as an input a variable and they do something to the variable and, and you know and produce an output but for certain functions the input that you give it the variable that you give it has to be of a certain data type and if it's of a different variable if it's of a different data type then it, the function will report an error for example if you try to use the sum function Alteryx and you give it a variable whose data type is not numeric right and you try to you know, add, add two variables together whose data types are not numeric. So you, like, you try to say, what's the sum of A plus B? Well, it's just going to say, I don't know. But if you, say, if, if you give it a data, if you give it a variable, whose if you give it two variables whose data types are numeric, what's the sum of one plus one? It can do that. It can... So that's an example of where data types matter in Alteryx. So often we're going to want to change the default data type of the variable, change it to something else, and we're going to talk about how to do that in another video. So that's what the data type is. Um, here's the number of records on this variable. 
and then the data type size for birth date. What this means is for each record, for each record, for this field, for this column, for each row of this variable, um, like this cell right here, can be at most 254 bytes of data here. So you can't put unlimited amount of stuff here. 254. This V string data type has at most uh, for each cell has at most 254 a space limit of 254 bytes. <clears throat> also in the browse tool, you um, you see that this this variable here has one null value in its in its column. And if we scroll down here, we can see that the null value for the birth date variable occurs on row 434. There's one null value. We can also know a, var a variable has null value if you just hover over it. If it says OK a 100%, then it's, there's no null values in, the, in that variable's column. But if there, you can see here if it says null 0.21%, we know there's at least one null value and so forth. Null values are something that you have to deal with with all data sets. And we'll talk about how to deal with null values uh, later. Uh, what else? Yeah, basically just gives you lots of information about this each variable. So the birth date variable you have all. There aren't any blanks in this variables column. There is one null value. Um, there were two people with this birth date, two people with this birth date, two people with this birth date. Um, uh, one person had a null birthday, and then everyone else had a unique birthday. There was only one person with this birthday, one person, and so forth. It literally gives you every every value, and then how many people had that value. Um, so a lot of information in the Browse tool. You can definitely use the Browse tool to really help you visualize the data before you do anything with it. And that's what you usually want to do in Alteryx when you bring in data. You bring it in with an input data tool, then you attach a Browse tool and run the workflow. When you look at the Browse tool, just see what what kind of what data are we dealing with? All right. And then the last tool I wanted to teach you in this video was the, uh, it's in the documentation category, the comment box tool. So make that a favorite. Um, I have it over here. It's my favorite. Let's drag and drop a comment box. Comment box is pretty self explanatory, it is what it says. So when you, when you hover over the comment box, here's the tool configuration. You literally, what it is, is it just, what it does is it allows you to type stuff in here. And the user, or whoever's looking at this workflow, can look at the comment box to see what your work, the comment box enables you to like get information about what your workflow is doing. So if I put this comment right underneath the, the Browse tool, this is a Browse tool. And then I can change the, the font, you know, down here. I can, I can make it bold. I can make it 12-point font. I can hit OK. Um, yeah. And if I click somewhere outside here, it changes, makes my changes. I can make this different size. And then I can move this, you know. So in your homework, you'll see I want you to answer some questions. And you're always going to answer those questions because uh, what you're turning in is just a workflow. You're going to turn in, once we save this, I'll show you how to save the workflow. You're going to turn that in, and that's your submission for your homework. And I'm wanting you to answer questions in your submission. So you're, you're going to have to make a workflow with some tools, but then answer questions about those tools. And when you answer the questions, you're going to be you need to use the comment box tool, right? So you would, like, if I asked you a question here, how many of how many employees? Um, what can I ask you? Let's go back to let's go back to the browse. <clears throat> how many variables are there? You say there's ten of them, right? How do we know that? Underneath the browse, if we click on the browse tool here. Over here, it's these 10 fields, right? How many rows? 474. How many variables? 10. 
for how many columns? 10. And so you could answer that question right here underneath the Browse tool. You could say, Browse tool says there are 474 rows in 10 columns, or 10 variables, 10 fields. And then make this big enough to where I can see your complete answer. And you can put as much stuff as you want in the workflow. This little thing down here just gets smaller and smaller the bigger, the more, the more tools you attach. You can get you can bring it as infinitely far to the right or infinitely down. You can attach tools. You know we can attach tools all over the place. Um, uh, one thing we can't do, whoops, let me get out of there. Why am I doing that? You can't attach a tool to the browse tool. You, you, you always attach the browse tool to another tool, but you can't attach, attach a tool to it. So usually I just put the browse tool kind of up here out of the way because I'm going to attach tools to the input data tool. If I want to do stuff to the data, I'm going to attach the tool to the input data tool. So yeah, you can move this comment box right here out of the way because we're going to put other tools down here. We can center align this, you know, we can if we we can go here, I think, yeah, text alignment, top center, we could change this to left. And it left aligns it, see. So there's just click on the, the comment box tool and, and here's the tool configuration. You can change the tool configuration. So you learned three tools today, input data tool, browse tool, and the comment box tool. You also learned the Altrix canvas is made up of four parts, the tool palette, the workflow, the tool configuration, and the results. And then there's one final thing before I end the video. Um, this is the default layout of the Altrix canvas, right? It has tool palette up here, workflow here, tool configuration here, and results here. But a better layout is to put the results up here as another tab. That way you have all of this space right here for the workflow. And then when you click on another tab, you click on the results tab, then you have all of this space for the results. And so to do that, all you need to do here is hover over like right this area right here no actually hover over the results and left click and hold down and then drag drag it off like this and then let go so it's like this so it's kind of free floating and then click this down arrow left click and then tab to document that makes the results its own document and here's the workflow so let's run the workflow again. And then we go to the results. Uh, oh, I gotta hover over the browse tool. I gotta click on the browse tool. Then we can go to the results, and you can see all the results right here from the browse tool. There's the output, and then here's the messages. There were no errors. Well, it calls it input. This is like the input data. It's the data from the input data tool, but it's this is output from running the workflow, the browse tool output in a sense. You can see though, you can see all of it right here on the screen. So I, I like to make the results uh, a separate tab document. By default, the results is, I can change it back to the way it was. It's down here, but I don't, I think that's harder on the eyes. And so I move it. First, make it just free floating and then left click and say tab document. Now, when you close all tricks, if I go to, uh, oh, actually, there's two more things I want to tell you. How do I save this layout so that whenever I open, open all tricks again, it stays at this layout? Because if I just close all tricks right here now, if I did this, it's going to say, do you want to save changes to the following workflows? If I do discard changes, it's just going to close all tricks. When I open Altrix again, I'm going to hit cancel, then the it's going to be back to the default layout with the results, not a tab document, but down here again. So what you do to save this as a, um, to save the layout, the current layout of Altrix, is you go to Options, you go to User Settings, Save Layout and Settings on Exit. Or Save Layout and Settings Now. But usually save lay layout and save settings on exit does the um, trick.
and I'll, we'll sh we'll show we'll prove that it did what we said when we we're going to close Altrix and reopen it. Um, how to save a workflow? So go to File, Save As. That's all you have to do. Go to Browse, and then we'll put it on our desktop, and we'll call it Introductory Workflow. Notice the file extension. By default, a workflow's file, to, the Altrix file extension for a workflow is .yxmd. So when you do your homework assignment, say this is your workflow here, you can close Altrix. We've saved that workflow right here. Here it is. And this is the document that you're going to submit as your submission for your homework assignment. So we can open this. I can left click this and it will open up Altrix automatically with this workflow in it. Or I can left click on Altrix, open Altrix, and then I can bring that workflow into it either way. So let's do it this way. Notice how when we open Altrix, the, the, um, it saved our canvas layout. The results is a separate tab. It's not down here. Now, if we, I want to open this particular workflow, then I go to File, Open Workflow, Browse, find the workflow on my desktop, hit Open, and there it is. So that concludes this video.